Hey guys, this is Coffee Chug and I'm here with the LEGO EV3 tip. Many of you are thinking about new ways to build robots, new ways to construct to become more effective, whether you're doing first LEGO League or just some um, summer camp challenges or maybe just things that you're doing in your school. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about that I think is really obvious, uh, but something that worth for you to consider with your team or with yourself when you're building is are, are two things. One, the center of gravity of your robot. Two, um, the weight balance. And three, bring it all together to create a really good robot uh, chassis system for your for your robot and your design, especially if you're in first Lego league. Now, keep in mind this: we don't want you spending forever on this, uh, but these are just some things for you to think about because you may run into some snags in your season where you have inconsistent turns or maybe your robot isn't quite doing what you want it to do. Oftentimes we blame it on an attachment, we blame it on our code, and sometimes it could just be the chassis of the robot. So what you're looking at here, I have um, just a five minute robot that I've built and it works out pretty well. And what we're gonna take a look at is the center of gravity. And so what I've done here is I have the five minute robot. And as I turn this around, I have built a fulcrum and I'll take this robot off here and show you in just a minute. But what we wanna do is take a look at the center of gravity. And how we find the center of gravity of a robot is we look for the divide here. So as I knock that off, here is just a simple little pyramid that we could use to create a fulcrum point for our robot to balance on. And we wanna see where the weight balance is, this way and this way. And where these two planes intersect, that becomes our center of gravity. And so the, this five minute bot is a really simple bot. I know your first Lego League robots will be much more complex, but as we go to set this on here, it gives just a really quick idea um, of what we're looking for. And so as I go to set this on here to try to find where that middle ground is or where it'll balance, we can see it right there. In the five minute robot, it's simple, but we can see it's kind of split almost just exactly right down the middle um, of this robot. So we know that this plane is right here. If we were to slice this in half, if we were like a fruit ninja. And then what we go to do here, and I'm just flipping this guy over just because it's, it's an easier way to balance. And I kind of get this thing balanced here. You can see it's kind of wobbling. I'm trying to find a good way that I can get this balanced on here. Because we want to get this spot. I don't know if we can necessarily get it just right. Oh. All right, so this is not a perfect example just because there's that little glitch on the screen, but we can see it's almost right in the middle um, if we were to actually transpose this up. And so the center of gravity is, is really, really good um, for this particular robot. And we know that just because it's simple and the base is little. And so if you're trying to figure out kind of like where the, your center of your robot is, you would just take the square of your four wheels. And that's what you wanna kinda of look at when you're thinking about that. And so this is just a great little test. You can build your own little fulcrum thing. You might need to make something a little bit bigger. You know, as you get in the first Lego League and you start building bigger robots, I mean, this big robot here is gonna have a real hard time balancing. I don't think I can get it on there. Oh, well, maybe. And so you might have to do some, you know, other adjustments here. There we go, let's see. Let's test this guy out. Boom. So if I can slide this back here so you can see, like this is almost pretty good weight balance right there on that one. So that's one good way. If you can't get that balance, or if you're, you know, your robot's wobbling like this and this is where it's weighted, you know that your weight your center of gravity is off, and that could impact your robot. You know, think about if my brick was not here, but all the way up here, it would be top heavy, and so when I come to a brief stop, it could topple over. Or if it's so heavy, it could be grinding down on the wheels, 
where all of a sudden my axle will start to push out and grind and now all of a sudden that creates um, an uneven balance in my robot as well. So those are just some things for you to think about. The other thing is this, we want to think about our weight balance. So we've got the center of gravity, which you just did, but you also want to think about your weight balance. So as you start to get going in the first leg of league, you start to add all sorts of attachments. Um, and so one of the things that you can do is you can get a scale, and I'm going to turn this on here. And I'm just going to move this to ounces. Actually, let's do, let's do grams. So if I stick this robot on here, I don't know if you can can see that there, but it's showing me that it is 1,337 grams, 36 grams, okay? Now, what we wanna do is think about the weight balance for this. So the, what we do is we take our wheels that we've got here on the bottom of our thing, and you want the distribution of the weight of your robot, especially if you're doing first Lego League, you want them over 50% of the weight on your drive wheels. And so when I put this back on the scale, I want at least over half of that total weight on these two wheels. So what you do is you kind of create a parallel surface. I found a book that's that's pretty even. I got my scale back at zero. And then when I stick my wheels back on here, I can see that the weight, I got 900 grams. So that's roughly, I don't know the math on that. You know what, actually I have a calculator right here. So if I take 13,336 divided by 902, oh, I lied, 902 divided by 336, I've got about 68% of my weight on those wheels, and that's good. You want well over 50%. If I'm doing a drag race, if I'm doing like a race car, I'd want 50-50 distribution. But what we want with turns, we want some weight on these wheels because that'll help the, the robot turn smoother and be more consistent. If it's too light, then we can run into problems with wheelies and things of that nature. And so those are just two quick things for you to think about. If you don't have a scale, you could simply just do this. So if you're in a school and you don't have a scale, this is my robot. A really simple test would just be to, I could lift up this end, and I could go over here and lift this end, and I can tell that this side's heavier. Like it's just, it's just, you kind of just do a, a pulse check. I can sit there and go, okay, boom, there you go. So those are two things. Think about your center of gravity of your robot. Ideally, you want it more in the center. The more you have, the better. And then weight balance, you want more there. The last thing to think about when it comes to your weight balance is this. Think about the following. Attachments. If I add an attachment to the back of my robot here, that's gonna add more weight, and so I'm gonna have to think about that. Second, the payload. I mean, if this robot all of a sudden is going to carry this robot somewhere, all of a sudden my weight completely shifts. And so you need to think about the payload and the attachments that you add. All right guys, I hope this is helpful. It's just a couple little tips for you to think about in your robot design. If you have any questions, let me know. Thoughts, comments, other things that you do, I'd love to hear it as we're all in this together to get better. And uh, stay awesome, stay rocking, stay building robots, guys. Take care.